because we were telling the House last week that in fact the Speaker has no role whatsoever in the dispute amongst the minority party. That in fact what the standing orders require you to do, Mr. Speaker, is upon receipt of this decision that has been made by the minority party, all you need to do is to make a communication to the House so that everybody else is aware. Number two, Mr. Speaker, there is something called jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is everything, as I say in law. Every single court and tribunal in this republic has to derive jurisdiction from a specific provision, either of the constitution or of an act of parliament. If the law does not give you jurisdiction, Mr. Speaker, you cannot assume that jurisdiction by yourself. Jurisdiction of the Political Parties Dispute Tribunal under Section 40 of the Political Parties Act is limited to the matters that I have alluded to, disputes among the members of a party and the party, or political party against political party. That jurisdiction, Mr. Speaker, does not extend to a jurisdiction over disputes over this House. The Political Parties Dispute Tribunal has no jurisdiction over the Senate, Mr. Speaker. And if you want to know that the people who went to court in this particular matter went to the tribunal are aware of that fact, the Speaker of the House is actually not a respondent in that matter. They are named as a, an interested party, Mr. Speaker. Thirdly, Mr. Speaker, I, because of my nature as a fortuitous person have obtained a copy of that court order. And a plain reading of the order has limited the matters before that tribunal to the question of the seat of the whip of the minority side. The question of the seat of the deputy whip is not a matter before the tribunal and it is not covered by that court order that you read to us or that you refer to, Mr. Speaker. The question then would be if whether we can debate the legality of the order, whether the tribunal can injunct parliament, the court order has expressed itself to a specific matter. What difficulty did your office have in communicating matters not affected by that court order? So that we in the minority, and knowing how our court system works and how long justice takes in this country, are being told that until until these matters are resolved at whatever stage, because it will come from the PPDT, we know she will go to the High Court as is her right. She can even go to the Court of Appeal and these matters take time. What we are being told is as the minority side, we will stay without a whip until that matter is resolved. It cannot be true, Mr. Speaker. So in my submissions, Mr. Speaker, I will be asking that you separate matters that are covered by this proceedings and the court order that is before you was, was served upon you and if there are matters that are not covered by that dispute you make the pronouncement on the leadership in the deputy minority whip seat. Mr. Speaker lastly I have been told or we have had you uh, being told that in fact you should be very afraid that if you were to defy a court order that you would come to you uh, or consequences some undisclosed consequences will befall you Mr. Speaker, as a lawyer who wasted no time in class, I did not sleep. I can assure you that the office is distinct from you. The office of the Speaker is an office with perpetuity. It does not say on this order that the Senator of Meru, Karuthi Murungi, if you disobey this court order, you are going to jail. There is nothing like that. And I can assure you because... We have a battery of lawyers here. If there is any consequence that will come by virtue of you standing up for the dignity of this house, free legal services will ensue from the minority side, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want to make the point further that in fact this house, every single time we argue with our colleagues from the National Assembly on who's the upper house, who's the lower house, but every single opportunity we ourselves get as senators, we impeach our own argument by making ourselves subservient to the National Assembly. If precedent is set in this House, in the, in the Senate, Mr. Speaker, 
Why are we being referred to president in the National Assembly? The Senate is not a student of the National Assembly. We don't need to learn anything from them. We are okay as a house. We are equipped with all the knowledge that we need. Our president is the president of the Senate. We don't need to be referred to any other house. Mr. Speaker, I want to join my colleagues here who are insisting that, in fact, we should be discussing serious issues. Mr. Speaker, every day I open my newspaper, my heart breaks. Yesterday or the other day we were being told we have 4,000 doctors in this country who are unemployed. Mr. Speaker, just the other day we were being told that even these doctors who this government has been unable to find work for are being imprisoned here by the Ministry of Health saying that they cannot go to seek opportunities outside the country. What sort of relationship are we with in a, with our nation that in fact the country refuses to provide opportunity for you, then refuses you opportunity to, leak, to look for uh, jobs elsewhere, uh, elsewhere? Those are the matters that I was elected to discuss here. I want to conclude, Mr. Speaker, by saying we in the minority side have no problem prosecuting this matter or prosecuting this matter before the PPDT. It is something over which we have experts. Senator Osochi basically wrote the book on how to deal with political parties at the PPDT. We are very well equipped on our side. We have no issues whatsoever. In fact, we have been taken. It's like now trying to drown a fish. You have now put us in water because in the PPDT, that is where we thrive, Mr. Speaker. You cannot dr dr drown a fish in a pond. That is where we live. I am happy that the matter is before the PBDT. But before we conclude that case, Mr. Speaker, please do not allow this House, which in our own constitution has the powers of a high court. We are, in terms of a judiciary, you are at the same level as a high court. How can a magistrate's court, a magistrate's court, issue an order directing the high court on what to do? Mr. Speaker, these are the questions to ponder. For that reason, I want to say, Mr. Speaker, please, please, let us not destroy this house. Give this house a dignity that has been given by those who came before us. Ensure that we are respected by all, all organs of government. And please do what the right thing is. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You cannot impose leadership on the minority side. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Senator William Cheptumo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I am happy. Our debate today is very sober. And I think this is really good, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, because we are being watched by our Kenyan people. Mr. Speaker, I listened to your communication very carefully. And it gave me the impression that you are ready today to issue a communication on the issue before the House. But you are stopped by the court order. Mr. Speaker, listening to the submissions by colleagues here, I would like to refer this House to Article 2 of the Constitution. This Constitution is a supreme law of the Republic and binds all persons and all state organs at both level of government. Mr. Speaker, Parliament, in my submissions, is a state organ, one of the state organs, and therefore it is bound by this Constitution. Mr. Speaker, I want to refer members again to Article 159 of the Constitution on judicial authority. The judicial authority is derived from the people of and people invested and shall be exercised by the courts. An emphasis, Mr. Speaker, the courts and tribunals established by or under the Constitution. Subarticle so 2 of the same article says, in exercising judicial authority, the courts and the tribunal shall be guided by the following principles.
justice shall be done to all irrespective of status. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to submit that the framers of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, and by that time I was serving as the Deputy Minister of Justice by this 2010, it was to give authority, Mr. Speaker, to the High Court and give similar powers also to the tribunals, Mr. Speaker. Political parties tribunal, therefore, Mr. Speaker, is an organ that has the power to issue orders, which under Article 2 of the Constitution should bind this House. Those are my humble submissions, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the members from the other side are saying that this ought not to have happened. But Mr. Speaker, the decision they have made as a coalition is affecting political rights of a member of this House. And that is why that member has gone to court, Mr. Speaker, to secure that right. And especially if that right is infringed in a manner that if she feels is unconstitutional. So, Mr. Speaker, I think there is the balance between what we want to achieve as political parties and also political rights of an individual, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to submit that you are within the constitutional principle. Mr. Speaker, members have spoken about what happened in the lower house when the PSS, Mr. Speaker, could not be vetted. I want to add another situation again which arose, Mr. Speaker. Until last week, the Chief Administrative Secretary, Mr. Speaker, that process was also stopped. That is another second chance I can talk about this. And Mr. Speaker, that was of course against executive. So Mr. Speaker, I think this constitution cannot be applied selectively. It should be applied fairly, constitutionally, if it's protecting the interest of, of a member. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to agree, um, I want to really, I was listening to Senior Counsel Mogheny when he was making his submissions. And he was able to plead with you that don't demean the status of the House. I think, Mr. Speaker, there is nothing more and worse than for the Speaker of this House to disobey court orders from an institution that has the power to issue a court order that can stop us. Mr. Speaker, I think it is important that we allow this process to proceed so that, Mr. Speaker, once they go back to the, uh, to the, to the tribunal, do their matters, as Kalwale said, we have only about two or three days, Mr. Speaker, and we will be, we'll be back. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to be in this house and to be part and parcel of a house that is obeying court orders, fulfilling the spirit of Article 2 of our Constitution. Mr. Speaker, nobody from the other side or this side should never and ever make you feel that you did the wrong thing today in stopping issuing the communication that you are actually prepared to do. And Mr. Speaker, in any event, standing order 23, which we have been arguing about the other day, does not give a specific time frame within which we are supposed to communicate the decision after receiving a letter from the other side. So again, from the standing order's position, you are within the law. Again, within the, from the perspective of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, you are within the law. Mr. Speaker, I submit that your communication should be respected by all of us and by this House. Thank you. Senator Orekina Redamo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want us to be very sober today and try to prosecute this matter. 
in a process that will be able to set a precedent and also being futuristic. Mr. Speaker, I want to pick it up from where my colleague, the Senator from Baringo, has left. And I want to borrow from what is commonly referred to as the doctrine of pleasure. The doctrine of, of pleasure is derived from the English common law, where it states that civil servants serve under the pleasure of the crown. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the definition of a whip, a whip enforces the party's policies. A whip is not there under their own volition for them to be able to determine how party policy should be adhered to. Mr. Speaker, when a whip does not rally fellow legislators to be able to vote on matters according to the party policy, that whip may lose that whip. In fact, in other jurisdictions, they are even expelled from political parties. Mr. Speaker, I believe that this is what informed the drafters of our standing orders. When they drafted standing order number 23, Mr. Speaker, and I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, that your hands are completely tied because a speaker is not a prefect of political parties. Mr. Speaker, the standing order is very clear. It's written in simple English. It says, upon a decision being made by the majority party or coalition under the standing order, the decision of the party or coalition shall be communicated to the speaker in writing together with the minutes of the meetings at which the decision was made. Hypothetically, Mr. Speaker, if this Senate is to welcome or entertain injunctions by a tribunal, which tribunal does not set the agenda or the policy of, pol of a political party? What exactly are we saying? Are we saying that tribunals are going to define what the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition policy and procedures and constitution shall be? Then what form of government or country are we going to be living in? Mr. Speaker, I want to refer back to the doctrine of pleasure. As a whip, I serve under the pleasure of my party. This cannot be applied with the same logic as to the doctrine of pleasure when it comes to now civil servants in this country post the 2010 coalition. In fact, Mr. Speaker, what I want to say is that any moment leadership is changed, just so that you know you serve under the pleasure of your political party. When the leadership is changed, you lose everything. You lose your staff. Your staff go home. You lose all the privileges because you've gone against your party policies. Mr. Speaker, loyalty to parties is not something which I should be lecturing this house on. Because this house already has precedents. Any time a member disobey the party, they are removed. I think, Mr. Speaker, what we should be doing is we should be debating on very important issues. Today, Kenyans were rioting, were demonstrating outside because of how difficult it is now to live in this country. Eric Omondi was tear gassed outside here. Kenyans are demonstrating everywhere, saying it is becoming unbearable to live in this country. We are paid by taxpayers. I don't want to wage into the debate of who is a shareholder of this country and who is not. But the truth of the matter is, there are very important things that 
are now being set in a bias until we can be able to resolve this matter of leadership. So, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to beseech you not to allow party politics to determine the agenda of this House. Because I can assure you that until the party is respected, and when I say, Mr. Speaker, I can assure you, I speak with authority, I speak out of experience, because this thing has happened to me. Senator Ledam Walekin is standing here. Mr. Speaker, in the last parliament, I was elected by my colleagues as a chair of PAC. But my party decided that I was not the right person to serve as chair of PAC. That is when I started researching on the doctrine of pleasure. I went to court, I got orders, but Parliament made it difficult even for me because Parliament did not want to come in anywhere. And when I say Parliament, I mean the Secretariat in Parliament. I was trying to convene meetings. I could not be able to convene a meeting because my party said I was not going to serve as the chair of that committee. Mr. Speaker, when I saw that is happening, I said, hey, can you take the dictionary and, this, and define loyalty? When I did, I went back and I pleaded with my party leader to forgive me for having crossed the line. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, when I stand here and I speak, I speak with authority on that subject. Please, you should not be invited to prefects political parties. Mr. Speaker, when we go to our PG, the things that we discuss in that PG do not touch on anything to do with the Senate. Laws. The first thing, which is always precedent, is how are we together as brothers? Do we still believe? Do we still subscribe to the same school of thoughts. So, Mr. Speaker, to end, I want to remind you that a whip is an enforcer of a political party, policies, and procedures. A whip loses the whip when they disobey or they act against the political party that he, that person is serving under the pleasure of that political party. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I've heard my uh, good brother, Senator Chep Tumo, alluding to natural justice, talking about, I think I drafted it down here, talking about the right of that politician. Mr. Speaker, I want to submit to my brother that through the chair, that when it comes to political parties, you have no right. The right is defined by your constitution, which you signed. It is not even the Kenyan constitution. It is a constitution of that political party. Loyalty to the party. And I can tell you, you will learn. If you don't know that, Loyalty to the party is the number one principle when it comes to the doctrine of pleasure. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to beseech you so that we can now discuss matters which are important to this nation. Please follow the standing orders. Standing order number 23, your hands are completely tied. And I'm sure the Secretariat can advise as much. Your hands are tied issue the communication, leave matters of political parties to be dealt by politicians outside this house. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Senators, uh, I want to give a, uh, another round of few, maybe two from each side, and this time observe three minutes. We're almost to the second hour. So I want to, now we give Senator Chalgay Samson. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have been listening keenly. Uh, as a house, it looks like we are, calling, we are going to full circle. <laughs>